Hello. Let's see, we're going to make this pattern here, this design. It's a tessellation. And you can see the when, when and where it was built. And the interesting thing is these are all done, these type of tessellations, which means a repeating pattern, are all done with just a compass and a straight edge, no actual measurement of angles or anything. So, in, and with SketchUp, it's it's like a fancy compass and, and a straight edge. I'm not really using any of the angle or length measuring devices here. So, once I get this done, I'm going to take the pattern and I'm going to project it onto a hyperboloid. In the other last two videos, part one and part two, I showed how to make a cone, and then you make the cone and from a triangle, and, and then how to make the the hyperbola curves from the cone, and then how to turn that hyperbola curve into a, a hyperboloid, a three-dimensional hyperbola. And then I want to take this type of tessellation and project it onto the hyperbola, and sort of like what Etcher did um, with his work. Uh, we get an idea of how these things get distorted when they're put onto what's called hyperbolic geometry. Okay, we'll get started here. So, with uh, different ways to do it, but this is according to the book that I used. It's easy to use, I, I recommend it. So, I just start, move it over here a little bit, with, with simply going to start with the curve, I mean a circle of, of radius 1, let's say, yeah. And put in one, enter, put her back out a little bit. Okay, and then I'll put most of them, the majority of these different designs are done with these overlapping circles. So that's where the compass comes in. Go from here up to here. Um, now, I can see that it looks like a pedal, maybe four pedals, some sort of pattern. And we can use this to actually construct most of this. So from here, I could see that I could go from this point here, if you wanted to do a main diagonal. But I'm just going to directly to here, and then from here to here, and from here down to here, and over to here, back up. This is going to be my hexagon. I can delete uh, this. I don't need it right now, so what I'll do is just clean up the excess stuff. I'll, I'm going to connect these diagonals here, something like this. I'll take this one and put it over like to here. All right, and so what I can do from here is a triangle from here to here. And take it down to this point and up to here. And I'll do another one, but going in the opposite direction. Go from here to here. And if you'll notice, that will form like a Star of David, sort of two equilateral triangles. So basically, I want to clean. I don't need the circles anymore. I'll try to select it out so that I can have a minimum amount of erase. Yeah, so I'll just pull that out, make it a group, and move it over a bit. Move it over. Oh. Here we go. Just move that out. And come back. I'll bring this back over. Yeah. I'm just deleting and trying to find a faster way of deleting what I don't need. Um, I don't need the circle anymore. What I'm going to do is uh, take these these points here where the star meets, like what, what, this triangle here meets right here, this junction. I can take that and let me try from here to here. That's better. And from here to here. Okay. Now, I have this one, um, it looks kind of, well, let me get rid of this, here we go. Might look a little strange, let's see, because I have this, hard to tell any difference right now, but I'm going to take this, to this from here to here. So, 
So we can it's distinguish. It gets a little hard to see what line is what. So I'll go from here and then um, right here. And I'll just go out and come back like that. Now I'm doing something on the other diagonal where I'll just take it from here and, and run it through here. And I'll go back out with it and take it all the way back out uh, like that. Yeah. Okay. And then I want to do the same up here. I'm going to do some more lines here from here to here. Yeah, I'll run that down. So, good like that. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's um, until um, so what I got going here is going to be like a letter Y. I'm going to take this guy here and get it over here. So you can see if I connect that up with this. Well, I need another diagonal yet, right? I need this one from here to here. And then I just come back out and I'm swing it back up. Okay, um, if I go and connect these ends here like this, just to give you an idea, to make it easier to see. Um, Okay, oh, here we go. Okay, now, uh, I'm, I'm going to do these Y. There's going to be like this. If this if, well, here's a Y. You see it going up here and it goes from here to here? That's good. And then here's an upside down Y. You see it goes from there to there. So that's pretty cool. Now, inside here, there's going to be like a six edge, six uh, edge a star. Here's one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. You see it? So you'll see it as I clean it up. So I'll take care of this and then I'll get rid of that and that, that. Get rid of. Okay, I got rid of that one already. That, that, no, this one. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, you can see a, a, another star in there. I'm going to clean up in here so I don't really need this at all. I'm going to have sort of a shamrock thing. I'll get rid of these two. They were just to kind of help you see the Y's. Uh, go through here. Okay. Good. I clean this up here, you see, so they have that. So I'll do the same here. I'll get rid of this and this. You can see I have the same setup here. And this and this. Yeah, and I get the same setup here and here. Okay. It looks simple enough now. Get rid of this. Yeah. That, that looks like pretty simple now let's see what happens when I start to tessellate it so I'll take it like this just start making copies of it let's see if we can start seeing the cubes come out of her out of that design so I'll go from here to here and then I'll go from here to here right and I'll go up like this yeah, you can kind of see. Hey, I start to see a cube in there. I can make this a little smaller so you can get the idea because I scaled it down clearly like this and scale it. I have a little more manageable size to deal with. You can see that, and I'll do one more so you can get the idea of what I'm talking about. And here I'll just tessellate that so I can put this. Um, over here. There you start to see those cubes. They're popping right out. 
and the stars and the rhombuses and the hexagon and the triangles, diamonds, a lot of different shapes in there. That's the genius of it all. And then I go from here and plop there. Okay, that's enough. So what I did is a bunch of them, and then I compacted it so it go back into. You know, I scaled it down so it kind of fit it into the the circle. So you, over here, I did like a bunch of them. Yeah, I, I did way many. <laughs> so you could see it here because it's hard to even see. I look at it as I come in. It's kind of cool. I like it. <laughs> but this was this this little cube I cut out was where I had my uh, a circle of, oh, of radius one, and that that cube's over here that I took out. See it? And then I put my circle in here. See that? And then I cleaned up around and I came to this over here. That's where we where we started. You see? That's kind of nice. So that's the pattern part. And now, like I said in the video one and two, we did the we had worked up to doing a hyperbolic. Now what I did is I copied this one here. I took this one, I copied it, and then I took it to another a new page in in, in SketchUp, and I um, colorized it. Yeah, and now I'm gonna and then I made an image of it, and then I'm gonna take that image and I'm gonna bring it back in. I'm gonna bring it back right into this page so that I can project it onto the hyperboloid. So let me save this and like that. And now I go over to this one, and what I have over here, wow, let's see, let me back out a bit, yeah, over here, you'll see I have this, and notice I'm looking from the top down, so I did that particularly, so I'm all in this two-dimensional looking thing, and uh, well, let me check this up a bit. And I'm going to take this and center it. Now I'm going to pull it from here over to here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll uh, I'll come in some more. I'll magnify it up, and now I'll uh, bring it over. Now this is another circle, but it's ready for the image. So first I'll I'll explode. So I'm back to this stage, and then I go to File, and I uh, I look for uh, well I'm going to import an image. Now when you import it and doing this, you have to make sure that this is selected where it says Use as a texture. So here I have that same design, but I colored it in somewhat, and I put it right here. Yeah. So then I drag it over and kind of make it bigger and okay now I go over here to texture and I look for position and I grab it and kind of just throw it in position all right and now I have to make it a little bigger so I'll pull it up make it bigger I'm trying to get it to fit in there let's see how close I am getting there maybe a little more Let's get it a little bigger. Yeah. yeah that looks kind of neat, really. That's the, the same design. I just two toned it. I, I kind of highlighted the star. And I think that's pretty good. So then I hit enter. Mm. Yeah, that probably could have been a little bigger. Let me see. Texture. Position. And let me just make it a little bigger. Pull this one out green one out and then reposition with it there nah, that's not bad okay there okay now that's on a disc now let me show you what's underneath it because i've been looking down the z-axis so like on the other two videos we made one of these you can see what i have under here is a hyperbola hyperboloid I call that because it's three-dimensional so I want to take this and project it onto here and see what, what happens. What's our hyperbolic look? And how did Etcher 
design his things. Uh, as a matter of fact, he spent like 11 years studying these ex um, these designs in, in Alhambra in El Granada, which is a beautiful uh, former mosque and uh, was there for hundreds of years and being built. So how do we project? So I'm going to just take this and um, I'll go to, I'll make sure that this thing is not in a group. Yeah, it is. So I have to explode it. There. <laughs> okay, that's good. And now you go to paint, right? And so I have paint. And let me go to select. Okay, so, so first I go uh, like this. Oh, oh, before I do that, I have to go here, right uh, right click textures and then go to projected okay then take a sample like this boom and then paint down here boom there uh, that's pretty cool let's uh let me move this over a bit let's see how that looks probably I should have positioned this so the star was right kind of in the middle yeah, it would have looked better, but anyway, let's see. For now, I'll just move this out so we can take a look at this. Um, yeah, I'll move it over. Uh, there we go. Get rid of that. All right, let's take a look. That's beautiful, really. At least I think so. Let's see, if you look at it from the side, you can see... Um, Let's see, that's how it was distributed out, right? Now watch what happens when I take a we take a dead on look to it. So right, right now, that's the curve, right? But how we would see it, that the, the things get more smashed around the edge as we look straight down upon it. It'll get to look like it was when it was in a two-dimensional flat thing there, you see? I'm turning it up, and I'm going to get it... Uh, looking right above us so let's do that um, see if I can turn around here a bit yeah oh. okay there now uh, let's see you, you can see what that looks like it looks like it was projected back onto it so if your eyeballs out here are looking into it it looks something like what it started out to be. Let's see, let me grab this over here. There we go. All right, and so, kind of for comparison. Yeah, that's, uh, let's turn it now. Let's see how it stretches out, how, how now it becomes stretched. Look, the difference. Yeah. Interesting. Now, the properties of parallel lines, you'll find that these things will start to form like these arches, see? So, if two lines are parallel, they'll form arches and they'll intersect down here at, at like 90 degrees. So, this arch, too, is gonna, it's going to reflect down here. To 90 degrees. So there you have it. Uh, you can play around with more patterns and different colors. There's infinite. But I've been experimenting by projecting these these, these kind of things. I'm going to move the star over a little bit here. But there you go. From here to here. I think that's pretty nice. You know what? This would make a nice like floor lamp. Something like that. Yeah. And you could see how much this this pattern changes by just coloring other stuff, coloring other parts of it. Okay, thanks.